Oh my goodness, we've got a fresh bit of maths research, well from 2019. I consider that very recent, all things considered. It's about Gaussian integers, rings, finite fields, and the magic square of squares. And so uh, for some of you, that's a bit of a spoiler on where parts of this video may be going. Some of you may know the Parker Square. This is a, a fan sent this in. If you don't know what the Parker Square is, that's great to hear. I don't want to call it the Parker Square because it doesn't work properly. Everyone will be like, oh, the, that's a well, classic Parker Square. We'll get to this content in a moment. Uh, first of all, I'm, I really want to focus in on finite fields. So a field is a bit, it's like a generalized version of what is a number. In terms of you can multiply it, you can add it, and very importantly, you can find its inverse. So for example, the numbers, the real numbers are a field. Because if you've got any, if you've got a number, I don't know, A, and you multiply it by B, you're gonna get exactly the same thing as if you've got B multiplied by A, which means that they are commutative. And there will exist some number, the inverse of A. So if you multiply A by one over A, then you get one. So that's our multiplication inverse. And so for any number, if you had, for example, a four, and then you multiply that by 0 0.25, uh, then you get uh, one. And very importantly, this is a real number, this is a real number. And so every real number has a buddy real number where if they multiply together, you get one, which means you can undo multiplication. It means you've got division and you're off and racing. And you can do this for all sorts of cool things. You can do it, like I said here, for the real numbers, you can do it for the complex numbers. Uh, you can do it like some polynomials if you wanna go wild. Uh, rationals, the field is wide open. That's what I'm trying to say, except the integers. The integers don't work. Very sadly, big fan of whole numbers. Everything else is great. You can add them, you can multiply them. And if you multiply them, that's the other thing I should say, if you multiply the two of them together, A times B, and you get some number C, that is also a real number, or it's, it's a member of the field. So it, the field's closed. There's nothing you can do in the field that will cause the ball to land outside the field. Anything, if you're gonna multiply, you add, you land somewhere else in the same field. Very important, and you've got this here. Whereas integers, that works. You multiply two integers together, you land somewhere else in the field of integers, but you cannot find an inverse, a whole number inverse for an integer, and so that, that means they get kicked out, unless you uh, shrink the field a bit. So instead of having the infinite um, as I say, there's infinitely many in integers, there's a big infinity of real numbers. Instead of having too much space, we wanna, we wanna narrow this down a little bit. If you have a finite field, suddenly your integers are back on the table and you can have inverses of whole numbers provided the field is finite. You know what, let's um, very quickly put together the addition and multiplication grids for a, a finite field across some integers. So uh, Brady, do you have a, a fun prime number? And I should warn you, the bigger the prime you name, the longer this is going to take. Don't go trivial. <laughs> Don't. I mean, it's seven? your seven. Seven. That's nice. That That's neat and tidy. So what we'll do is, so for seven, we're going to effectively be doing modular arithmetic on mod seven. And so what we're going to do is let's do uh, multiplication first. And I'll very quickly fill in this table. So we're going to multiply. Here we go. We're going to multiply uh, as if this is a grid. So one times one is one. I mean, this is a super boring column. This one's not much more exciting. So two times one is two. Two two is a four. Six. Ah, now this, this should be eight. Mod seven. One. And so here we should have 10. So that's gonna be three. And here we should have 12, so that's gonna be five. So I'm taking whatever you get when you multiply these, I'm getting the remainder mod seven. So I'm dividing out any sevens, it's just the leftover bit. And we can do the same thing for addition, where we add them and we take the mod seven and we loop back. Now at this point, a lot of people are thinking, well, hang on, why are you getting so excited about finite fields when you're just doing modular arithmetic? That doesn't count. Well, it, it's not 100% true. So I would call this, this is like the, the integers. Uh, so Z, weird Z for the integers, uh, kind of mod seven gives us this. 
This doesn't work for any number. You don't get a finite field, which is why I said prime. It only works for primes and powers of primes. So you will get a finite field for the integers mod seven. You'll get a finite field for the integers mod 49, because that's seven squared, or mod uh, 25, because that's five squared, or, or whatever the case. It doesn't work for the in-between values. Now, I've never tried this, but I thought it might be fun just to see what happens when it breaks. So let's break it. Let's, Brady, do you wanna pick a number which is not a prime and is not a power of a prime and then we'll, we'll try to do the same grid and we'll see, we'll see why it breaks. Six. Six, excellent, because that's three times two. It's not a power of a prime. It's got more than one prime factor is the other way of um, saying that. So, uh, so this is gonna be fancy Z uh, six. Okay, so uh, I should point out I, I've kind of hidden zero because a whole row of zeros is even less exciting than um, having these. Um, and zero doesn't get inverses and all that jazz, so we ignore zero. Now, so you think, well, hang on, this is perfectly good. Why doesn't this count as a finite field? Well, it's because we haven't got our inverses. So if you have a look over here, all the numbers we might have, all the non-zeros, one through six, one has an inverse. It's one, because there's one here. Two has an inverse, it's four. So if you multiply two by four, mod seven, you get back to one. So technically, a half in the finite field seven is four. So that checks out. Uh, three, a third is five, because three times five gives you one, and then there's one there, and there's one there, and there's one there. And so quite nicely, there is a one in every single row, and there's a one in every single column. As you said up here, we have to be able to achieve one somehow. Yes, you have to be able to multiply to get to one. And you can't do that with regular integers, but because you've got mod, it means you can loop around to get back to one. Because otherwise, once, you, once you're gone, you're not, you're not coming back to one, whereas now, loops back. However, sometimes you, you never hit the one. So you, there's, a, there's some ones in this grid, but look at this, two hasn't got a inverse. There's nothing you can multiply two by to get back to one mod six. And so that's why this one is ruled out. It's still nice, still modular arithmetic, big fan. It's not a finite field. And uh, finite fields then link to all other amazing things and loads of um, abstract mathematics. Uh, you'll be looking at uh, fields and finite fields, which are great. And uh, finite fields have allowed for a breakthrough in an area of maths uh, very close to my heart. When I first read a paper, I'm just kind of glancing through it. I'm not checking through all the detail. I just wanna get a sense of what they're doing and you know what I do and don't understand. Uh, and then what really jumped out at me is section five here. The smallest non-Parker finite field. It turns out they're now using my name. That's me, I'm Parker. As a type, like a, a, a property that finite fields can have. In fact, you can put all finite fields into two categories. You can put them into the Parker finite fields and you can put them into the non-Parker finite fields. And a very good question might be, um, which is better? Um, and very sadly, a, a Parker finite field means it doesn't work. It's like the dud. It's the dud. Finite fields, when they're growing up, what do you want to be when you're exactly the same size because you're finite? And they say, oh, I hope I'm non-Parker. That would be the dream, to be a non-Parker finite field. <laughs> So I've got a thing named after me. I'm afraid your field has been diagnosed as Parker. <laughs> I'm afraid it's Parker. <laughs> it's, it's not curable, the condition of being Parker. Oh, and they've used uh, fancy F to mean finite field mod 29. For example, is not Parker since here. And then they've given a, a magic square. So for everyone who's unfamiliar with uh, magic squares of squares, this is a really nice entry point. So this is a magic square and it's got uh, nine numbers in it. And so a magic square, if you want it to be properly magic, is if you add together all the columns, you always get the same total. If you add together all the rows, you always get the same total. And people are really insistent about this, it turns out. If you add together both of the diagonals, 
you get the same total. And then you can go insane. You can do all these like pan diagonals that, that wrap around, but people don't tend to put those in. They just care about both of those diagonals. That doesn't work for these numbers until we square them. You now have a magic square where every number in it is a square number and it works. Hence magic square of squares. Hence magic square of squares. Now, this has one extra condition. So, I, so the, the full backstory is I came up with a magic square of squares because I thought it was interesting no one had ever found one and no one had ever managed to prove that one doesn't exist, which is still true for the record. So I gave it a go. I found this one. Now mine has the extra condition, it's not very good. And that's because it's got the duplicate numbers. So you can, in fact, it's symmetric, which is terrible. And it doesn't add, it doesn't do all of them. One of the diagonals is wrong. Near miss. And it's been dubbed the Parker Square and I don't know who was responsible for this, but a line of merch came out. People started showing up to my shows wearing t-shirts. Very few performers have to put up with being bullied by their merch at their own gigs. This one has a condition as well. So it is, it's got both diagonals, it's got every row, every column, except the whole thing only works mod 29. So this works on the finite field of integers uh, mod 29. We can, we can check that. I, uh, I would like to do that. And you can decide how much stays in the edit. And now these are all mod 29. So anything smaller than 29 doesn't budge. Anything bigger than 29, woo! So now we need to go through and add these up. So we'll do the rows first, shall we? So 23 and 25 is 28, 29. So if we come across there, add them up, we get 29. This one here, we get 29. Uh, this one here, you're thinking, whoa! It's gonna be bigger than 29. 28 and 24 is gonna be 52, 58. And you're like, well, that's way too big. Well, actually, 58 mod 29, well, it's zero. In fact, all of these mod 29 are zero. So actually, if you add every single direction, you get zero. So it's a magic square of squares where the magic sum is zero. So. That's a beautiful I don't story. know why I find that so pleasing. And look what dross you served us up. I know, hey! <laughs> I, I, four years early, like you can't look, like it's like looking at the iPhone 4 and going, well that wasn't very good. Yeah, things have moved on, technology has advanced. Without this, <laughs> this wouldn't be happening. That's right. What a weird world we live in, Brady. So 29, like that's a, that's a non-Parker field. It's a non-Parker field because it, within the numbers in the finite field of order 29, there exists a perfect three by three magic square of squares. And so any uh, finite field where you can make a magic square of squares is a non-Parker finite field because it works. And then the rest of the paper, of this section of the paper, this is really quite nice. They then go, they go, well, hang on, okay, we found this one. And then they say, uh, here's all the finite fields with orders less than 29. And so you've got a whole bunch of them here. They're, they're all the primes and powers of primes below 29. So now they found the one for 29. And the obvious question is, is that the smallest? This is what you always ask in math. Is it the smallest? Is it the biggest? And so their, their first question was, is 29 the smallest finite field which is non-Parker. So is everything below that unfortunately resigned to being Parker. And when you say finite fields, we're narrowing this search to the integer finite fields, yeah. obviously. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah. And you could do magic squares with other things. Chuck some polynomials in there. You could do complex. In fact, Gaussian numbers they're talking about earlier uh, when, when, when you're looking at um, in the complex space, right? So there's, there's a lot of fun you can have. Here's the deal, they go through, they rule them all out. None of them are non-Parker. Everything below 29 is Parker. And so they managed to show uh, comprehensively that this is the smallest non-Parker finite field. But then they turn and look in the other direction. In general, they suddenly realize actually most finite fields are non-Parker. Turns out the Parker ones, the ones that don't work are quite rare. And so here, it's a conjecture. So this is not proven, but they seem pretty confident. The only Parker fields of prime order are these ones. And so it turns out any finite field with a prime order of our friends, the integers bigger than 67 
is non-Parker. All of them, the infinitely many prime numbers bigger than 67, all have a magic square of squares in their, somewhere in their finite field. So it turns out not working, being a Parker, is actually quite a rare, um, special property. Prestigious. Ex exactly. Bestowed upon very few people and finite fields get to have the luxury of being Parker because, uh, and it's conjectured, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to believe them because once you go past six, they're all, they're all non-Parker. Now, the flip side to this is you might say, well, what about infinite fields? Like, what, what about the integers? Which is what started this whole thing in the first place. For the infinite field of um, integers, well, this is no longer uh, a field. It's now, it's a ring, but it's not. It's, it's no longer a field. There's infinitely many of them. The question I have is, does this tell us anything about finding the Parker um, square in general? Yeah, or, the, the, or true. The, the, the true, the true, the true. Yeah, square. and sadly we still don't know. No. So all, all they can say is you can have arbitrarily large finite fields of a prime order and they will always have a magic square of squares in there. They're all non-Parker because they work. We still don't know if a magic square of squares just without needing to be mod anything exists. So it's still an open question and so um, the research will continue. I mean, the greatest minds in mathematics will continue to turn their attention using things like finite fields and any mathematical tool at their disposal in the soul, like the greatest search in maths is our numbers Parker or our numbers non-Parker. This discussion continues for a bit longer in a bonus video on our extras channel number file two. That's, what is the, oh my goodness, we need to have a Parker prize. Well, what are the other prizes out there? There's like... Millennium. Millennium. Fields Mill. That's a bit rich. For more about what Matt Parker's up to, from live shows to books to his own YouTube channel, Stand Up Maths, check out the various links in the video description. Could we co even communicate with beings from a non-Parker reality? It boggles the mind. <laughs>